Welcome everybody. My name's Bob Hill, I'm the Executive Dean of the Faculty of Sciences here and uh, um, for the pleasure of uh, introducing everybody this morning. Uh, I'd personally like to acknowledge the Kaurna people, the original custodians of the Adelaide Plains and the land on which the University of Adelaide's campuses at North Terrace, Waite, Theberton and Roseworthy are built. Uh, it's my pleasure this morning to welcome Senator Kim Carr, the Minister for Innovation, Industry, Science and Research, to this very important event for the Faculty of Sciences and the University of Adelaide. I'd also like to welcome members of the University of Adelaide community that are here and also welcome the most important people here today who are the students about to commence first year in sciences at the University of Adelaide. So welcome everybody. Uh, we're very excited about the new teaching initiative that we're embarking upon this year. There's two major drivers behind this. Firstly, it's clear to us that students expect and deserve the most relevant curriculum that we can offer. And to that end, uh, we made the decision in 2010 to revise our entire teaching program around the 10 big questions in science that we believe our world-class research program could best inform. Uh, that world-class research program, in fact, has been very recently confirmed by the ERA results. In designing this new curriculum, it became clear that a new technology was required to best deliver this to the students, and we selected the Apple iPad for this purpose. This also helped us with the second major driver. As a faculty, we're strongly committed to being available to students from all backgrounds, and we're very aware that one of the major financial burdens for students has been the constantly rising price of textbooks. We estimate that an average science student can spend in excess of $1,000 a year on textbooks, and we know that only about one third of students buy these books, leaving the remainder at a clear disadvantage. I'm delighted to say that we've already secured electronic textbooks for all our major first year courses for 2011, something we were told only a few months ago would not be achievable and the cost of these books will be approximately 60% of the paper copies. This represents a major saving to students, but we're not finished with this issue. We know that many students will still not be able to afford these books. During 2011, our major focus will be on finding and producing our own open source information to replace textbooks for science students. This will take some time, but I believe that within two years we'll be able to present a cost-free option to all students in sciences and produce a genuinely level playing field for all our undergraduate students. This will be a great day for the faculty. Today represents a major milestone in this journey. I'd especially like to thank the Vice-Chancellor and the staff of the faculty for their strong support for this initiative, and in particular the members of our first year teaching team who have driven this project with great enthusiasm, dedication and skill. <coughs> it's now my pleasure to hand over to Senator Carr and ask him to present free iPads to a very lucky subset of our commencing group of about 1,000 undergraduate students in science in 2011. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Professor Hill. And uh, before I do the deed, can I uh, just say that it's a, a matter of great pleasure to be here in Adelaide and say, however, I, I, I have mixed feelings I have about this uh, event in some ways because I come from a generation that didn't have the advantages many of the students here have today. And we do have an extraordinary talented group of people who are embarking upon what I trust will be their scientific careers uh, following uh, their work there. I was born in the same year as Bill Gates, uh, the founder of Microsoft, and Tim Berners-Lee, who is credited to be the inventor of the World Wide Web. Uh, I'm sure you can check all that out on the iPads uh, shortly uh, when you have them up and running. Uh, I began my degree at a period when we just simply didn't have the breakthroughs uh, that you have today, which of course have seen measures of accessibility to knowledge and participation at unprecedented uh, levels for humanity. Students in my era relied entirely on printed books and, uh, and journals, which were often out of date, and where there was often a huge contest uh, to actually secure from the library. Students today will have access to a world of knowledge that simply 
defies comprehension of the information that's uh, available. Now, it's estimated in 2009 that if you put all the data that was available online, that's uh, in print, you could stack all those volumes together to the point where they could stretch from Earth to Pluto 10 times over. And if you think about what we're doing with new scientific projects like the SKA, the Square Kilometre Array, when we get that up and running, we will find that that's a project that will be able to give us information that goes back to the dawn of time. It will generate data to the level, and I find these figures incredible, but the, uh, the astronomers tell me this to be true. They say that they will be collecting data every single day that's the equivalent of all the words ever spoken by humanity throughout time. Every single day. And you think through that, what that means in terms of the computing power we will need to process that data and to be able to transmit that data uh, in new ways of uh, learning. And so what we have here is an opportunity for you to embark upon that journey with the tools that previous generations have never had. And I know that you will put that to good use because there is an expectation that you will be able to help us build the prosperity for the future. Build the new industries, build the new jobs, discover the new secrets or unlock those new secrets that allow us to enjoy that prosperity into the future. Now frankly, I regard it as a disgrace that so many Australians are missing out. Missing out on the opportunities that you have and that the broadband can give. The jobs, the access to information about their health, about uh, all aspects of their life, the opportunities that are effectively flowing overseas as a result of our failure. You just think through what it means for people in Coppin Bay, for instance, on the Air Peninsula, Callington in the Adelaide Hills, Amaruka near Lake Torrance. These are people that just don't have access. Today we estimate that some 73% of premises in South Australia are unable to access broadband services at speeds greater than 12 megabits per second and that 1.1% have no terrestrial broadband coverage whatsoever. So we're determined to do something about that. That's why the National Broadband Network will ensure that 93% of all Australian premises have access to high-speed fibre network providing broadband speeds that will be up to 100 megabits per second. Now the remaining 7% will have access to next generation wireless and satellite technology providing peak speeds of at least 12 megabits per second. Now that's why we call this a nation building investment. Just like we're investing in you. This is genuinely nation building expenditure. I thank the University of Adelaide for taking the lead in today's uh, announcement. And I know that they too, this university, can expect great things for the students who receive these iPads. And I just ask you to remember the great head start you've had on the previous generations that have come before you. Good on you. All the very best with you.